everybody. What's going on? I am here in Sedona. So a new background for me today, but welcome to another session of Awaken Your Relationships. And you know what? It is time to let those relationships in your life blow up their own lives and no longer blow up yours. <laughs> Reed and I were just talking about how um, I have some examples of this going on in my own world these days. And uh, it's so true. Like when you stop allowing other people blowing up your lives and making your life like you're always trying to like fix it and you're trying to plug the hole and you're trying to do this and trying to do that and it's like no 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 don't do that anymore when you stop participating and stop engaging and stop doing that which i know is very very hard for people then all of a sudden people are having to sit in their own stuff of what they are putting out in the world because you're not taking it on for them and um, read up, I mean, share because, oh my gosh, you, you gave me a couple lines. It's like, let people deal with their own shit, find their way out of their own messes. Like you are just like rattling them off. And I'm like, you're so right. This is where your freedom is. And we don't even realize that this is where the freedom is. Well, it's, you know, it really is generational because we've been taught generation after generation women have that we're responsible for everything that happens around us. Right. And because of that, you know, we think that it's our responsibility to fix everything that happens. And really that's kind of how we've all gotten into trouble in the first place. That's because so adults have the ability for the most part, unless there's something seriously wrong, they have the ability to find their own way out of the dark. And yeah. until they get comfortable with that, until they get comfortable managing how they feel, what they're working through, um, it, there's no progress. And so the smartest thing we can do is to, one of my coaches says, give the minimum amount of support. You have to let them do it on their own as much as possible and give the minimum amount of support so that people can gain confidence that they can handle life. Yeah, because when we think about it, and this goes back to many of the other episodes that we've had, that we talk about how um, we enter into relationships and it's like projection of trauma, projecting of trauma. Like that's what you're doing back and forth. Like you had a trauma growing up, they had a trauma growing up, and then you do this dance. And so when you allow somebody the space to just kind of fall, it's kind of like a toddler, right? Trying to learn how to walk. It's like, let them get a nosebleed. I always say like, let them get a nosebleed. It's okay, they're, they're building the muscle. I say this in the money world all the time. Like they're building the muscle of how to not carry debt in their lives. Well, this is also true um, for the relationship side, mm -hmm. right? It's just a skill. You know, we, it's, we look at emotional challenges as like somebody's broken or somebody's wrong or, or somebody's helpless. And in reality, it's just the skill that we weren't taught. Right. We weren't taught the appropriate way to handle how we feel so that it enriches us mm -hmm. instead of, you know, destroys our life and, and impacts the people that we love. That's true. And you know what? It's, um, it's not easy. I'm just going to say like you, your unhooking of other people's stuff, um, takes time because you too have built the muscle to play this role, right? And so you have to allow yourself the space. Like you're not going to be perfect when you first try to come out of the gates and do that mm -hmm. because you have cellular memory of doing it another way. Right. You're, it's hardwired into your body. So you actually have to give yourself time to um, reverse the problem and build a new muscle. And it always takes longer than we want for sure. It's mm -hmm. You know, but faster than we actually think it can happen because we usually feel helpless. But as soon as you start taking steps that take personal responsibility for how you feel or how you're living your life, that's when things start to change for the better. But right. as long as our focus is out there of it being somebody else's fault, they did this to me, um, right. it keeps us helpless right. because we never learn the skill of how to handle how we feel in a way that's beneficial instead of in a way that's destructive. Right, right. Yeah, that's so true. And you know what? Um, it takes just one day at a time. Like you can only show up today in the way that you're wired 
and, and do the best that you possibly can. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. there's massive change going on. And, and so often we don't give ourselves that space. You know, there's, um, it, it was really made obvious to me the other day about how much we um, misinterpret life. Like someone was talking about how they believed that women would find another partner based on how uh, financially successful the new partner was. So that women would just keep leveling up. Let's right. Say. Right. And that as soon as they found somebody better, that they would be attracted to somebody new and that it's natural they would leave. And I made it pretty clear, no, attraction's based on a lot of things. Like if women live in an impoverished country with no health insurance, they will choose pictures of men who have higher testosterone in their system. If they live in a country with better health insurance, they will choose men with less testosterone in their system. When women are on birth control pills, they are more attracted to people who are uh, have the genetics of their uh, family line of their own DNA. Really? And when they are, yeah. And when they're not on the pill, they will be most attracted to people who are completely opposite of their DNA. Like <laughs> that sure shit makes a whole lot of sense in my world. Because <laughs> it, it's totally based on smell. Attraction is a physical thing, mm -hmm. and if somebody smells right diverse to yeah. a woman, then they're going to be very drawn to that because the diversity of the genes. If they're pregnant or on birth control, so their body thinks that they're pregnant, then they're attracted to someone who's more of a family, someone who's familiar, someone who's more comfortable. Wow. And then, you know, let's say, let's talk. And, and so let's, let's think, let's take that down a rat, a little bit of a rabbit hole, right? So <laughs> it, you've got all these women in their twenties, and 30s on birth control, right? And you come from these trauma-backed backgrounds with your families, then all you're going to then attract is more of the trauma part of your family. Because it's familiar and you're on birth control and like you're gonna seek out people that were familiar to your childhood home, if you will. That's fascinating right. to me. Yes. That's no joke. So I don't, yeah. So a lot, of, a lot of people will get caught up in some story that they created about why they're attracted to somebody or why they're not attracted to somebody. And then it, it, it keeps going because I'm broken, because it's their fault, because I'm unlovable, because of uh, trauma that happened to me. And really, it's based on biology. You know, these choices That's that we make. fascinating. Yeah, our, our physical consciousness. And we have to use our higher consciousness to kind of keep our bodies in check. To be like, yes, I know he smells really good. However, <laughs> he's- Well, he's it's like, where's your radar, right? Right. Well, and then that's where, like when you talk about people who get divorced, like you tend to repeat the patterns and you'll wind up divorced twice and three times yeah. because you're attracting the same bird with a different name. Right. And it's not always because you're attracting the, you know, um, somebody with um, emotional issues. You may just be more attracted to and they attracted to you because their DNA is more diverse mm. than yours. People who are have significantly different DNA than me smell very attractive. Their pheromones hook my body in. Mm. You no. Know? And so it, we we put all these stories on why this happened or why it didn't happen. And we completely forget the fact that our body has its own consciousness and makes its own decisions. And then we're just coming up with stories to explain why our body's doing this without really understanding or finding out the truth. Right. That is fascinating. So those of you who are watching, like we've got to, this is taking it to another level of consciousness, right? Like we're not aware of how, our natural instincts play such a huge role in it as well. Because I can tell you that no woman who goes on birth control ever thinks of, well, let's see, do I want to attract the kind of household that I grew up in? Like, 
I don't know. I don't necessarily know if women ever consider that because they probably don't even know that that ever existed. Certainly wasn't the case when I was in my 20s and 30s and on it. <laughs> exactly. No one, because this information, although it's been out, you know, for 20, 30 years, it, it hasn't been integrated mm -hmm. as a truth. So people still walk around blind with their eyes closed, blaming everything and not really finding out the cause, which is right, usually right. physical or biological. And you can do something different. You know, right. you can say, okay, I'm attracted to this DNA. Can I find somebody who'd be a better partner for me than this person? Even right. though they smell really good, I can find somebody else who smells good who isn't such a jerk. Right. Well, and it's, okay, so this goes back to like letting them blow up their own lives you know, instead of yours, like when we do these things on a proactive level, mm -hmm. then we are allowing that person just to sit in their own stuff and not impact you. But the, okay, so that's on the front end, but then you've got the issue of, okay, now you're, you're in it, right? You're in it. You've chose it for whatever reason, whether it was because you biologically were attracted or whatever, or it's familiar. I, I remember saying like, oh my God, I just want an Irish guy that's just like my dad and my brother. So they get the Irish girl. I literally said that. Well, that's what I got somewhat, you know, and um, that didn't turn out real well in my world. <laughs> right. We have to have the courage to do things which are unfamiliar to us so that we can grow as people. And yeah. if we don't have the courage, the first thing we need to do is get the courage. We need right. to get up stability and self-confidence so we can make different decisions than our family made. Right. And so um, how does one untangle, you know, what is your best recommendations for if someone's already in it and your life is getting blown up by the narcissist or the borderline personality disorder person? Like how, how, how do you start to step out of that and let them start to blow up their own life? The first thing you need to do is protect yourself because if you don't feel safe, you're going to constantly be in a stressed out reactionary place that makes things worse. You're going to be confused. Mm -hmm. You're going to be upset. You're going to be angry. Brene Brown would say the most compassionate women are the women with the strongest boundaries. Mm. So you have to start protecting yourself first in whatever way that looks like. If it means um, walking away and finding a, a safe home, if it means blocking someone either through technology or the phone, like you use the divorce software. Right. You know, you moved yeah, out. Family wizard. Yeah. Yeah. You told me that um, when you made the decision, you took your kids and you went to a hotel room, you got out. So you I did. Yeah. The first step is to protect yourself and your and take care of your needs first so mm -hmm. that you can address whatever happens from a stable rational place right right yeah the next step that um people need to take is they need to start learning how to manage their own emotions so you can do that in a wide variety of ways you can do therapy but therapy can take a really long time it's one tool it's yeah. really use multiple tools like you do to use mm -hmm. four or five or six different things because they all have their own gifts that they bring. Right. Well, and I always say, you know, even on the money front that, um, you know, if we don't approach things, uh, our subconscious mind will constantly screw with us. Right. And uh, Bruce Lipton's book, The Biology Belief, you know, he's a biologist, so he gets it. And he says that 97 percent of our experience, the world is from our subconscious mind operating system, not our conscious mind. So if we're not addressing the subconscious mind, and a lot of that is energetically, um, you know, I remember years ago, I was at a symposium with uh, Deepak Chopra and he said, you know, uh, if you work with somebody who works in this energetic realm, the holographic layer of the universe, it's kind of like, think about it, how our cell phones work, right? Our cell phones connect into something without any wires, that's the holographic layer, okay? So this isn't as woo-woo as one yeah, might be. It's connected through, you know, it's like radio waves and microwaves, mm -hmm. and it's just, it's right. the same thing where there's a wavelength that physically connects you to me and especially mothers to their children. Right, and so you can work with professionals that actually tap into this holographic layer 
And that something that would take you 10 years from a psychotherapy perspective can take you 30 seconds right. to change and shift. This is why Rita is saying that, you know, you could do traditional therapy and that does help, but it takes a really long time if you don't also work with somebody that does the energetics. Like a lot of therapists these days are using tapping. You know, you tap acupressure points, you know, yeah, you yeah. people on airplanes going like this, you know. Um, and I would say that that's a watered down version of energy work that you can do. It is certainly a tool that can be used and it's effective, but there are ones that are um, more effective out there. And by all means, if anyone who's watching needs a referral to somebody that does that, just let us know and we can certainly refer you to somebody. But, um, but it's- Yeah, or work with me. You know, that works out too, or work with you because we're, it's all really the same thing. You know, my, what I've discovered over the years, because I've been doing this for a long time, is that you want to layer things, you know, at least an hour every morning, do um, the thing that put on a um, meditation at 435 hertz. Did I uh, freeze up? Um, you froze up. Okay. We got, so let me just make sure I heard that right. So you get a meditation that's 435 megahertz. Right. That's the one I've been working with lately. Yeah. And, and the 435, what does that, because uh, I know different megahertz address different things. What does that one address? That one addresses manifesting. Perfect. And I've actually found that the reason I'm, dedicated to it is because it changes my thinking when i'm listening to that brainwave uh hertz level my brain's able to think clearly it's mm -hmm. able to visualize better and it's able to manifest things better because i get a clear vision mm. while i'm doing that and i have them on concert speakers so it's not just in my head on a headphone it's physical wavelengths. So yeah. my body's vibrating to that 435 Hertz too. Mm -hmm. And then for 20 minutes, I use something called an alpha stim mm -hmm. and it sends an electrical current, a very light, light electrical current through your brain and your body. Mm -hmm. And it stimulates the cell receptors, right? So instead of eating a carrot to get my body to release beta endorphins, you actually don't need the physical chemical. You don't, right. you, you don't need that. You can just vibrate the cell receptor. At the yep. same time, I've got one of my most fun things. Let me grab it. <laughs> I love when Rita brings out her fun things because oh, <laughs> they're usually very easy tools that can add a little bit of joy into our lives. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, yeah, oh my God. Okay, so this is my latest, my latest. I have one of those, like I have one of those at home. <laughs> it's my Reiki infused chakra quartz crystal tiara. Yep. And quartz crystal they use in stereo systems and speakers because it of course magnifies and picks up vibrations. It's cool because yep. when I'm listening to my singing bowls and my tiaras on my head, I can feel the quartz vibrating and I feel it vibrating in my head. That's amazing. These are the same tools, honest to God. The same tools that the Egyptians use, that the Buddhists use, that um, anyone who's on a spiritual path uses, because it up levels your yep. Um, yep. up levels your body. It mm -hmm. up levels your ability to connect with spirit. And any of these tools work. Like, did I freeze again? Because I know my internet's a little wonky. Yeah, we we still heard you, even though um, you froze up a little bit, but. Um, yeah, so okay, these good. tools, it's really fascinating to me how they work really, really well in terms of, um, we don't understand how much sound affects us. Like even down to the kind of music that you listen to and, and what kind of mood you're in, like there is vibration to all of it. You know, I often talk about rife frequencies as well. You know, like if you know that you're getting sick because you're taking on somebody else's stuff, like rife frequencies, you just go on YouTube and right frequencies, actually, um, if you have a sore throat because you're not using your voice, right? You're not using your voice and you're, you're, something's going and on in your throat. Yeah. And physically what's happening is for some reason you 
at some time didn't feel that you were allowed to talk. And oh, so there's no doubt. Right. We constrict those muscles. We constrict the blood vessels. We constrict everything in that area. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is you don't get good blood flow. You don't get good lymph flow. You don't get good nervous. It's, it's a blockage. It's like a 12 car pileup. Right. That happens. And then of course, you're always going to have problems with your throat when you're stressed mm -hmm. because that's what your body does. And then it locks down and, and it gets sick and creates right. problems. And then you wonder why you've got, but I've also known that what, one of the things I came to realize in my healing process is that I realized that's why I love to sing in the car. Because it moves the energy yes. out of my voice. Yes. And, um, and so, but like, like I was saying, there's these right frequencies that they're 10 minutes on YouTube, you ten know, minutes. 10 minutes. And you listen to these tones because we got to remember everything in the universe is a vibration. You are in the relationship that you are in because you're vibrating at a certain level along with the person you're in relationship with or was in relationship with. Right. And you have to choose a different vibration. So if you want to choose to not have whatever goes on in your throat or your hips or wherever it is, it's showing up in your body, you have to increase the vibration to get away from the disease of where it's soaring in your body and doing work with like with Rita or some of these, you know, attunements yeah. that we're talking about. Um, and, and you're, you've probably been doing it for years at a vibration that's not serving you well. And this is why you're stuck in other people's stuff, let them then blow up your life. And yeah. really they need to blow up their own lives. And when yeah. you stop playing the game with them, they do blow up their lives. And I, I remember people saying that to me four or five years ago. And I'm like, yeah, but the kids, uh, yeah, but, uh, but, 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 and it's cause I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't not untangle on some level because I just, I always fixed it. I'm the second oldest of 12 children. I fixed it all the time. It was just a role I played when I was a kid. It was the role that I played as I grew up. I'm a business owner. I would fix things for employees. I'd fix things for clients, you know, and I'm, I'm a financial planner, you know, and I have a quick, a quick coaching question for you just to take this a little bit deeper. Yeah, let's uh, do it. What would have happened in your thoughts what, what would have really happened? Not what you were scared would happen, but what would have really <laughs> happened? <question. laughs> what would have really happened if as a kid, you decided not to fix certain things? You know, it's interesting um, because I've had to do that as an adult. Um, other people would have built their own muscles. That's all that would have happened. I had someone say to me, what? your sister stayed in the marriage that she was in because you interfered because I kept fixing it for her, like paid their mortgage payment, paid for their kids' soccer clubs, like blah, 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 blah. And she didn't experience the reality of exactly the relationship she was in because yes. I interfered. And I came from a place of, I was just trying to help. Like she was, she was struggling. You want to distract yourself from dealing with your own feelings because right. you didn't know how to deal with your feelings and it was way easier to try to help somebody else. Right. So then I would sit in the feelings of, cause this is what I had to do as an adult. Then I have to sit in the feelings and watch the people that I love, like destroy parts of their lives, like, and struggle. And, you know, and I now know that more being a mom, right? Like I remember my mom always saying like, well, you know, they got to figure out how to walk. And my mom would always force us to do it ourselves. You know, she's like, that's how you learn. Like she could care less that we screwed anything up because she knew we were building the muscle, you know, to get yourself to be more independent. Every single one of me and my siblings are independent. Every one of them. It's because mom, mom was just like, well, you got to figure it out. My mom, well, my mom was the exact, yeah, mine was the exact same way. You know, she was, she was an intellectual, you know, she was a librarian. Yeah. She didn't get hooked into a lot of drama which was why she was in relationship with my dad because my dad needed a balancer and she you know found him interesting and they were different <laughs> he smelled different you know he was different and so she, her, she was the same way I remember you telling me once about um your mom just no matter what happened she would make the I believe the perfect cup of coffee um no no not the perfect 
there was something that every the the house could be going crazy the kids could be all naked and running around and your mom had oh she would just oh yeah she would just be like it wasn't a perfect cup of coffee like sometimes she would make her coffee and then she'd just be like oh well i'll get to it like she didn't nothing rocked her like she just would be like "Eh." well i mean to have 12 children in 16 years you'd have to go with the flow like nobody's business you know she's like you could work all day long and the jobs would never fully get done. She's like, there was just way too much work. So if I decided I wanted to sit down and have my cup of coffee, I would. And, but, but that none of us really do that. Like my mom just was underneath an enormous pressure cooker. So you had no other choice. Right. And, and, and I would also say that, you know, her gift was that she um, also allowed each one of us kids to be exactly who we were. Like she did, she was not one of those moms that tried to say, well, you got to do this and you got to do this. She held the line on values, but not on you exploring and trying things. Like it was like carte blanche. We could try everything and anything we ever desired. And she never stopped us, you know? And, um, but it's interesting, you know, I also noticed that almost all of me and my siblings married somebody that has high anxiety almost every one of us, you know, because we're very solid and grounded. So that opposite piece, they were different, you know, and cause we could hold the container. So we held the container for our spouses while they were, because it was, you know, their trauma childhood, which created anxieties. And it's really fascinating to me. And it's been fascinating to me to watch some of our siblings, the couples work through it and they grew together. Whereas there's a couple of us that we got divorced and we grew apart because the other party was not doing their work. And one right. of us was, you know, right. it's really because interesting. At the end of the day, it's um, about someone learning how to regulate and manage their own body and their own emotions and right. taking responsibility for, for their own physical self. And we get, our bodies get entrained to a certain level of drama or anxiety so if we don't have it in our lives, it makes us feel uncomfortable because our body's ready to jump. It's ready to react, but right. there's nothing to react to because things are going well. <clears throat> right. So we literally have to change the baseline of our nervous system so that it doesn't want to react so often. It doesn't want to get in the fight. So we end up in relationships with people that give us good reasons to be as angry or upset or frustrated as, the, as we are. Mm -hmm. In reality, we would be that way, whether that person was in our life or not. Right. So our job is to just change the baseline of our own nervous system from child to adult. And that is sitting in your own emotions while like for me, like it was sitting there watching people that I love make choices that I would never make. And because I could see the path that they were going to go down, you know, and it was just it was it was always hard for me to watch when I knew the solution. You know, that would be the hard part. But it's really fascinating to me to now watch, you know, as I have learned to let go of my patterning and the things that would um, not allow me to move on, it was really interesting to then watch them build their own muscles. So really nothing ever falls apart when you actually stand in your own power and you let them blow up their own lives. You know, like you really, it, it really doesn't, um, and they may lash out. I certainly have experienced the lashing out. Um, there's been a couple instances where it's been a pretty big lash out. Like when I'm like going, it's not mine. You know, when I finally had the courage to say, this is not mine. And, and it's a skill to build up. Like first, what happens when you decide like, I'm tired of my life blown up. Like, I don't want this anymore. And then you let them sit in their stuff. Then, then the lashback comes, comes back at you because what happens is, is that they don't like the fact that you've decided to change because you've played right. the game. Their, their nervous system still wants to react to right. a certain degree. Let's right. say at 80%, right. their nervous system wants to be activated because right. it's familiar. And when you hold yourself very clearly and blamelessly, then they don't have anything to attach to you and they have to deal with their own feelings of frustration because they they have to find a healthier way to deal with it Mm -hmm. besides offloading it onto you. Right. 
Well, and, 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 and the way that I do this, honestly, the way that I let other people live their own lives is I listen to my singing bowl meditation with my crystal tiara on and I let the vibrations keep my body grounded and it keeps my head grounded because otherwise everybody else's emotions keep wanting to trigger you and your body's like, yeah, I want to be triggered. Yeah. I want to be triggered. It's an addiction. It's you have to, it is an addiction. So like, have, you have to find something else to fill that hole. Right. And, and, and that is the key. Like I had people say to me going, Hey, you need to, um, you're almost like addicted to the drama behind, you know, this blowing up process. And I was like, what? Addicted to the drama? I don't want anything to do with it. And, and it's not that I was like, um, conscious of being addicted to it, but my cellular structure was re total. Like I couldn't stop it. If I tried, I'm like going, okay, right. I see what you're saying, I know what you're saying on a cellular level. I can't shift. I, I, so to Rita's point, everybody, listen to that because you create the emotional space to no longer react by doing these like meditations. And for me, it was like getting massages, meditations. One of my favorite places now is this Korean spa that I found that you can sit in salt rooms and heat rooms, hot sauna rooms. I, that's Nirvana. Rooms. Like I have just found that that going there once every two weeks just totally gets me grounded in this created space, this new element. And I feel like a million bucks. And here's the other thing. I started to realize that all of this reactivity and having someone try to blow up your life because you're allowing that. And uh, because that's what I created. Like we have to realize that if somebody else is blowing up your life, you've created that. And we often like to say it's the other person it's not. Yes, they're participating, but you're the one fully allowing it in your life. And going to a place like the Korean spa for me, what it does is even my, my physical body shrinks up. The inflammation goes down. Cause for years I was like, I don't understand. Like I'm eating vegetables. I'm eating low calorie. I'm exercising. Why don't I shrink up? And it was because of the inflammation. And it was because of this emotional reactivity that I was constantly being bombarded with. Right. Whether your ex was in your life or not, you just, right. just, uh, your body would keep reacting and then your brain would try to explain it. And it would scan the environment looking for something to blame for why you felt the way that you felt. Correct. And, and then your body then gets inflamed up and it goes, and right. you don't even realize on a cellular structure, it's just how you've trained your cells to react. So you can train your cells to react in a completely different way. Right. And, and that's the metamorphosis that I am in right now. And I've had enough um, uh, real life uh, examples of it's flipping and it's changing and it's shrinking because I'm shifting the energy. You know, I can see somebody react and be like, okay, I don't, I don't really want to participate in that. And, you know, I'll never forget when I was told about my son um, <clears throat> and I sat there and he's like, say something. And I was like, interesting. I had not one reactive bone in my body. He goes, interesting. What's interesting about that? Like, what do we, what do we do? And I was like, interesting. I was fully in a state of neutrality. I was fully in the state of the observer. And you know, a year prior to that, my Southside Irish girl in Chicago would have come out and had a field day with him. You know, I, you know, my temper, my anger, my, you know, rage. And, and rightfully so. Yeah, that's, the th that's an important piece I want to interject, which is um, you have to consciously make a different choice to be somebody different and to react differently. And when you do, that's how everything changes. Because you're, we have to remember, we live in a hologram. I want people to really understand this. How you are wired in the inside is then how the world shows up to you in the outside. You change the inside. And what it looks like. Right, you change the inside, like creating space and to be the observer and be in a state of neutrality, all of a sudden, 
the outside world changes and that person either shifts and levels up or they shift out, they vibrate away. Like I'm in a phase right now in my life where I can tell I just did another upgrade in being in a state of neutrality because I've got clients, work people who have worked with me for a decade, they're leaving my world. And I'm like, oh, that's fascinating. And it's happened to me enough times that, you know, where you hit these levels of like, and at first we get scared because it's like, oh my God, it's falling apart. And it's what you're familiar with. And it's like, now I can just observe it and go, ooh, I'm on another upgrade. This is kind of cool <laughs> because then I'm getting to where it is that I would desire to be in my life. And it's okay that people go on their own journeys and it's okay that they're following their heart and their soul. And it's like, cause you bring these people in to be those mirrors for you so that you on a soul level can do the work that you're meant to do. And then when that interchange and exchange is over, then you can both move on and some grow with you and some grow away and that's okay. Right. right. Life is going to happen. This they're, they're reading about the latest quantum physics. Uh, they have been able, there's a wobble in a nuclear electron thing. I think it's called a muon in Batavia at Fermilab. Oh yeah. And it, that just came out and it, it blows up, you know, what they thought they knew about the universe and how it works. And the neat thing about science is there's no emotionality around it. It either works or it doesn't. It either follows the principles and theories you came up with or it doesn't. Right. There's right. no, there's no in between. And that's really life. When we take the time to go to the spa, we're changing out the lens that we're looking at the world. The world didn't change. What changed was how we saw the world right. because like you said, we gave ourselves enough space and enough support and love to see it differently. Right, right. That's so true. That is so, so true. Um, I do wanna ask you, Rita, um, Doreen here asked earlier on when we were talking about things, she asked if there is a book to read about some of this stuff and how we attract and like, um, how our bio biology um, just attracts the people that are in our lives. Is there any kind of book or any other resource that someone can look at for that? To stop attracting the same kind of people in our lives? Mm -hmm. You know, my favorite author is Candace Pert and she's passed, but she wrote a book called Molecules of Emotion. Oh, that's a great one. Yeah. And what it does is it talks to you about the biology of why we feel the way that we feel. And I truly believe when we open ourselves to new information, it gets planted in our subconscious and we automatically start behaving differently because of it. Right. You know, Mary Morrissey is um, a speaker, a, a, a healer that I'm following lately. And she's, you know, worked with the Dalai Lama. She did all the Hay House stuff. You know, she was buddies with Wayne Dyer and, you know, all of that for like 50 years. Mm -hmm. And I watched her TEDx talk and it was about how you will be creating things no matter what. No matter what you do, you're automatically creating things. And if you can plant a clear vision of what you want, let's say, um, coming home and dinner's on the stove and flowers are on the table and you didn't make it, you didn't do it. Mm. Or um, having a fun movie night with your family where everybody gets along and, and imagining that and envisioning that, you will naturally create it. Yep. If you allow that it's possible yep. and you have a clear vision, <clears throat> then you can let go because your body will keep, keep moving towards it. Every time you get an opportunity, you'll move closer to it. Every time you work through something, you move closer to it. Yep. So you really don't have to do anything difficult. I mean, seriously, people, people don't believe me when I say, no, really, you need to go to the spa. That's your homework. You need to go to the spa. You need to wear your crystal tiara. You need yep. to give yourself some space. And from that place, you'll be able to make good decisions that move you forward towards the dreams and goals that you really have. So true. 
And it's because it helps it to move out of the physical body so that you don't have the cellular memory to do the old stuff, you're moving to the new stuff. And that's yes. how you get others to stop blowing up your life because you're not playing the game with them anymore. Yes, you that stop really letting them blow up your life. Right. And then they'll find something else to react to because it's not about them or the stories they tell or the stories we tell. You know, going back to the beginning when I said people think attraction is, you know, something that's, that's not understood when in reality it's the body that's attracted on right. some level and it's attracted for all of these different reasons and when you because that's nature that's science right and when you start controlling for that and adjusting for that you you um your life changes when you do something different your life changes that's so true and you know what and it really has to do with loving yourself enough to actually take the time to put yourself as the priority. Yes, and get rid of all that guilt and all the stuff that's on the magazine covers and every, and your mother talking to you in your ear, you know, telling you you should be this way or you should be that way, you know, or the, or the, or the misogynist that lives next door saying, why aren't you enough of a woman? Women are this way. I mean, we're bombarded by these cultural beliefs about who we're supposed to be, which are lies, they're lies. Right. We stand for our own womanhood and what mm -hmm. our needs are. So true. Rita, you are amazing. How does somebody get a hold of you if they want to do some one on one work? Because I think it's so important that um, you guys love yourself enough to do this work. I'm telling you, this is why you're like, I am the money chick, but I got to tell you, we either work things out, we act it out through our money, through our health, or through our relationships, which is why I do these lives. Because if you're good with your money, guess what? It shows up in your relationships or your health. And it could what show you focus more on. Yeah, what you focus on is what grows. And if you're ignoring something in your relationship, it's going to probably stack. also have then a lot of debt. That's what I've noticed. Like if you're ignoring something in your relationship, it's acting out because you have all this credit card debt or all this other stuff. And you know, it, it's, it's all related and we don't realize that it is. And yeah. so Rita, how does somebody uh, get a hold of you if they need to? If they need to, they can go to Rita at RitaHickmanCoaching.com or they can type in Rita Hickman on YouTube or Facebook. They'll find me pretty easy. Um, for people who are newbies, I do a seven-week jumpstart where we help them build the muscle over the course of seven weeks. And really, once that happens, time after time, it, people explain it like unzipping an old and stepping into a new self or taking off a suit that's too tight or breaking through a seed coat into the light you know yep. so it, literally like in seven weeks people learn how to become the highest version of themselves and they've got a, a strategy for the rest of their lives on totally. how to keep growing yep yep that's beautiful and if i can help you at all on the money front by all means i put the link below to get a free copy of my book you just have to pay for your shipping um, and just know because it is free, um, I wanted to keep the cost low. So um, it does take the mail uh, a little bit to get it to you. So just be patient. That's why I try to put it at a uh, free cost for you guys. So, um, but here to help you along the way. And um, we'll see you then next week for another session of Awaken Your Relationships. Thanks everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs>